I'll tell you how to charge up your Ganyu's damage in the next 30 seconds. Ganyu is a flexible 5-star cryo DPS and support who excels at both roles. She works excellently in freeze, mono cryo, and melt teams. Almost all 5-star weapons are viable on her, and she has two very strong 4-star craftables. Her best in slot sets are Blizzard Strayer and Wanderer's Troop, respectively. Her charge shots have no ICD and don't require energy to function. Her burst is quadratic scaling, and she's best used in AoE scenarios. And she's extremely timeless as a unit overall, still viable in the Abyss to this day. I'm Juice, and that was the Spice. Now, let's get nerdy. Also, stick around till the end of the video to have your viewer questions about Ganyu answered. Since Ganyu has a variety of playstyles and is primarily used as a DPS, all of her talents are worth leveling. To start with, arguably her key talent, assuming you're playing Ganyu on field, her normal attack. While her actual physical normal attacks are useless, her charge shots are truly what make this a formidable talent. She has two levels of her charge shot. Charge level 1, her initial frost flake arrow, and charge level 2, her frost flake arrow's bloom. Upon fully charging up for 2 seconds and releasing, there will be an initial frost flake arrow, and then afterwards, three shots will be fired out in an AoE fashion, dealing higher damage called the Frostflake Arrow Bloom. This can be shot at the floor to hit multiple enemies in an area too, though you would lose the damage from the initial Frostflake Arrow. This is where a thick portion of her damage comes from if you're playing Ganyu on field and should be leveled to level 9 at a minimum to meet Abyss standards. Ganyu's elemental skill, Trail of the Chilin, releases a short ice lotus on field which will explode after 6 seconds of a 10 second cooldown. It surrounds opponents continuously throughout its duration, taunting enemies nearby to attack it. Using the skill also pushes Ganyu away from from the Ice Lotus. This draws attention away from Ganyu and allows her to shoot enemies effectively from a distance. The Lotus can also explode if it is destroyed before its duration ends, and the amount of hits it can take scales off of Ganyu's max HP. This does not warrant building HP on Ganyu. Solid talent though, and should be last on the priority list. Up next, what is most likely her key talent to focus on if you're playing Freeze Ganyu or Support Ganyu? Her powerful elemental burst. It summons in a large AoE in which enemies standing inside the AoE will be damaged by ice shards that rain down during Ganyu's burst. This burst has quadratic scaling, which means the more enemies there are on field, the more valuable Ganyu's burst becomes. This is another must level in regards to Ganyu and provides excellent utility across many teams. Ganyu also features quite impressive passive talent. Her first passive undivided heart increases Ganyu's crit rate by 20% for 5 seconds after she releases a Frostflake arrow. This doesn't apply to the initial arrow being shot, but all Frostflake arrows shot afterwards. This is incredibly useful as it essentially provides Ganyu with free stats and makes it easier to stack crit damage and attack percent on her. Her second passive, Harmony Between Heaven and Earth, provides some stats to not only Ganyu, but the rest of her team as well. When you stand inside the large AoE of Ganyu's burst, all active party members cryo damage bonus percent is increased by 20%. This is incredibly useful for both Ganyu herself, increasing her own cryo damage bonus and aids her supportive capabilities too. This can be especially high value within Ganyu's freeze teams and mono cryo teams. In terms of priority, it would probably go along the lines of normal attack equal to the elemental burst, and both of them are better than the elemental skill. Whether her normal attack or elemental burst is more valuable to level up depends on you as a player and what playstyle you plan to employ with your Ganyu. Ganyu has a particularly cheap burst cost of 60 energy and tends not to struggle much with energy uptime. Her burst also has a long duration of 15 seconds and an equally long 15 second cooldown. Plus, her burst tends to not even be used within melt, so to your benefit, this means you won't have much energy demands to meet with your Ganyu. Within most common freeze teams, 110-140% to energy recharge will suffice. Though, because Ganyu's burst tends to be up so regularly in these kinds of teams, 110-120% to would be fine. Note that in her most popular freeze team, Morgana, Venti's passive providing Ganyu a 15 flat cryo energy assuming he absorbs cryo into his burst lowers Ganyu's energy recharge requirements significantly. Melt comps tend to never utilize Ganyu's burst, though if you do choose to use it in, say, a burning melt comp, then 120 to 140 percent should suffice. Mono cryo teams require only about 110 to 130 percent energy recharge, usually on the higher end of Ganyu's acting as the main DPS over Ayaka. Two piece of emblem of severed fate also tends to cover the amount of energy required for Ganyu in support Ganyu teams. Overall, Ganyu isn't really a character with thick energy demands. Ganyu's best in slot sets can vary depending on what kind of team you're running in, so I'll split this into subsections so it's easier for you to digest. Freeze and Mono Cryo Team. For Peace, Blizzard Strayer is obviously her best choice in this scenario as it tends to be for all freeze-based units. It provides Ganyu a 15% cryo damage bonus with its two-piece effect and also 40% additional crit rate total when proking its four-piece effect. In a Mono Cryo Team, even if you're facing unfreezable enemies, you will still obtain an extra 20% crit rate. Since Ganyu already provides 
provides herself 20% crit rate, and Cryo Resonance provides you with 15%. This makes it much easier to invest into other offensive stats on your Ganyu, such as crit damage and attack percent. It's easily obtainable through the strong box too, and tends to be Ganyu's most flexible best in slot set across all of her teams. As for a placeholder, if you don't have a full, full four-piece set yet, then two-piece Blizzard Strayer plus two-piece attack percent or two-piece burst damage percent from the Blessed would be your next best bet. It's nowhere near as good as four-piece Blizzard Strayer, but the placeholder can work since both are easily strong boxable and provide their own benefits to parts of Ganyu's kit. Burst damage bonus is nice since it can benefit Ganyu's quadratic scaling burst. An extra attack percent can be nice since it is a highly valuable stat within Freeze team, but this is nowhere near as good as four-piece Blizzard Strayer. Melt teams. Ganyu has two major options within Melt team, four-piece Wanderer's Troop and four-piece Shimanawa's Reminiscent. Wanderer's Troop is her overall unconditional best in slot set. The provision of 80 elemental mastery from the two-piece effect is highly valuable. There is no gimmick required to obtain the 35% buff to your charge attack damage. It's easily available for both bosses and the strong buff and can also allow Ganyu's burst to be used in a more niche kind of melt team or in open world scenarios. Four piece Shimanawa's reminiscence is a part of a highly resin efficient domain being paired alongside the emblem set and has a large 50% boost to Ganyu's charge attack damage. But two piece is less valuable in melt teams and maybe more uncomfortable to play in an open world scenario. You're locked out of Ganyu's burst by using the set and it is only better than Wanderer's Troop if you're able to pull off five multi charge shots in Ganyu's rotation, which is generally impossible for a majority of players. Even then, it's a solid substitute set if you don't already have a full Wanderer's Troop set. Two-piece combos can vary between two-piece Blizzard Strayer, two-piece sets that offer 80 elemental mastery, and two-piece sets that offer attack percent. These are all significantly weaker than the four-piece options. However, they work as solid placeholders for the time being. Four-piece Gilded Dreams can also provide Ganyu of 230 elemental mastery, which is nice, but the timing of the set's passive may not always line up with Ganyu's rotations. It's also only slightly better than most two-piece two-piece combinations. Four-piece Lava Walker is a niche set that can work if you own it, though it isn't really worth deliberately farming for as you could just strongbox Wanderer's Troop instead too. But it's worth mentioning that it can work on her. Four-piece Retracing Bolide can also function in teams where you're utilizing Zhongli as your shielder. However, the two-piece effect of 35% extra shield strength is negligible, and there's far better sets that you can work towards for her. Support Ganyu. Using four-piece emblem covers her energy requirements for the two-piece of the set, provides some nice burst damage, and is highly resin efficient. Overall, a pretty good choice for support Ganyu, but this is a highly contested set, so it may be difficult to find free emblem pieces to slot onto your Ganyu. Four-piece Blizzard Strayer is a great option for any team where a consistent cryo aura can be maintained for the set's four-piece effect. Very flexible, and also works across many other of Ganyu's team. Four-piece Noblesse Oblige provides a nice amount of attack percent to the team, and also increases Ganyu's own burst damage, though unfortunately Ganyu cannot snapshot the attack value provided onto her own burst. Not a bad choice, however. Any two-piece two-piece variation featuring these sets would work perfectly fine on a support Ganyu. As for substats, for freeze, you would want to prioritize attack percent, then crit damage, then energy recharge, and then that's equal to crit rate. For melt, however, you would want to prioritize elemental mastery first, then attack percent, then crit rate, and then crit damage. Ganyu is able to use essentially all five-star weapons, and has two fantastic four-star free-to-play options that work for both of her main team archetypes. Prototype Crescent is a great four-star weapon that is best using Ganyu's Freeze and Mono Cryo teams with a nice attack percent substat with a passive that's very powerful for Ganyu, but its weapon's performance can fall off if the enemy doesn't have a weak point. Hamayumi is a more conditional weapon that doesn't encourage the use of Ganyu's burst, therefore making it perfect for traditional melt, as its passive synergizes perfectly with it, and also provides Ganyu with some nice attack percent stats, also having easy access to upgrades with free-to-play refinements. That goes for Prototype Crescent as well. The Amos Bow is Ganyu's signature 5-star weapon that provides an immense amount of attack percent and shines well in lower investment freeze teams, and can also have a great niche in solo runs. While this may be Ganyu's signature weapon by technicality and as a solid choice for her overall, do note that it scales pretty badly with high investment. For example, Shen his Icy Quills would have less of an effect on an Amos Bow Ganyu. The Skyward Harp is another nice stat stick, standard 5-star weapon, but is more powerful than her 4-star craftable options, decent over most of her archetypes. Thundering Pulse is another nice stat stick on Ganyu with the large base attack and crit damage it provides. However, unfortunately, the normal attack buffing passive is useless on her. Still, a solid weapon choice for her overall.
Aqua Simulacra is one of Ganyu's best weapons, especially in melt teams, and it scales well with investment. While the 20% HP may only be good for increasing her skill's lotus bulk, the crit damage provided synergizes greatly for the built-in crit rate within Ganyu's kit, and the unconditional 20% buff to damage overall when near enemies, especially fantastic in teams where Ganyu is up close to the enemies, such as melt. The weapon is also formidable in Frieza Mono Cryo teams, as crit damage has a lot of value there too. Overall, arguably the second best weapon option for Ganyu as a whole. As for her best in slot, that would be the Polar Star. There's a universal 12% buff at R1 to Ganyu skill and burst damage, and she is able to maintain full uptime in the attack percent stats of the weapon's passive. The crit rate may end up overcapping within freeze teams, though attack percent is highly valuable within freeze, making this her undisputed best within freeze and monocryo teams. The base attack of the weapon is also high, and its only major downside is that perhaps Aqua Simulacra still may be better in Melt. Fantastic choice for Ganyu overall. A quick mention should also be made on Hunter's Path. Yes, it does work on Melt Ganyu to great effect, but the passive is essentially void in every other team except Melt. So I would not recommend pulling this weapon over Aqua Simulacra instead because Simulacra will yield you more consistent results across more of Ganyu's teams. However, Hunter's Path does synergize excellently with Melt Ganyu, providing high crit rate, a great passive for Melt, and takes advantage of how she is built within this team. Now, Ganyu has a multitude of teams, so it's time for some more sections. Freeze. Ganyu generally wants to be paired with a Hydro unit and an Animal unit alongside an additional Cryo support within this team archetype. Mona, Kokomi, and Ayato all work as Hydros, Veti, Sucro, and the less preferred, yet still viable Kazuha all work as Animos, and Diona, Sucrose, and Shenha all work as Cryo units. Venti generally synergize with Ganyu the best in terms of an animal unit, assuming it's an AoE scenario, and Ganyu and Ayato both have quadratic scaling bursts, which makes for a unique synergy between them. Freeze teams are very straightforward. Ganyu's burst is the most important within these teams. In terms of rotation, simply make sure that Cryo is applied, then Swirled, then Hydro is applied, and then Ganyu's burst is released. Melt teams. Once again, very straightforward. She has few options options here. You will always want Bennett as your pyro applicator for attack percent and pyro application. He cannot be removed from any of these teams. For traditional Melt Ganyu, you would play Ganyu, Bennett, Shangling, and Zhongli, a very solid single target choice for Ganyu. You can't use Ganyu's burst in this team. You can also play Ganyu of Kazuha instead of Shangling, though this can limit the AoE that Ganyu can travel since you must stay within Kazuha's burst AoE for the pyro application. You can also play a more burst-oriented Melt Ganyu with Ganyu, Bennett, Nikita, and Kazuha. This is also nice since Nahida is able to provide elemental mastery to Ganyu on field, and the burning reaction actually has a place to stay for once. However, do note that Ganyu on field can be risky in this team without a shielder. Uh, Dia can arguably replace Bennett in Melt Ganyu teams, though then you'll be missing out on Bennett's highly valuable attack percent buff. Also, why did you level up Dia? Mono Cryo teams! If Ganyu is the main DPS, and you want to play her alongside Shenha, Kazuha, and Zhongli, this allows Ganyu to make use of her 4-piece Blitter Strayer set while still dealing solid single target damage, and she can hold up an AoE decently. However, the more enemies, the more effective it would be to just play Freeze. If Ganyu is supporting or rather acting as the sub-DPS instead, then Ayaka, Ganyu, Shenha, and Kazuha is a fantastic mono cryo team, which is also my favorite team by the way, where Ganyu's 20% cryo damage bonus from those who stand within her burst becomes especially viable. Do note that since this team lacks a healer, it may be difficult to play for some. Very good within single target and can hold up nicely within AoE scenarios. A lot of raw strength, by the way. Support Ganyu. Support Ganyu works anywhere, but her best use cases would be supporting a mono cryo team, or perhaps in a bridge team to apply additional cryo, or even a reverse melt team. She could also act as a support for Ayato in an Ayato-centric freezer fridge team. Ganyu's charge shots have no ICD, which means she can constantly apply cryo with them, which is how she's able to melt so consistently and cause reactions comfortably. Her elemental skills also ICD free, meaning that it won't mess up many reactions and safe to use within melt teams. Ganyu's burst, however, has standard ICD on each of Ganyu's individual burst icicles. This is why her burst tends to interfere with traditional melt teams. Ganyu's cryo application is fantastic, and overall she has 100% uptime on her cryo app. However, do note that you can lose uptime if you perhaps have to leave aim shot mode to dodge and such, and that not every icicle of Ganyu's burst may make a mark. So, to all my dearest swiping enthusiasts, I'm sure you're all very curious as to just how good Ganyu's constellations are. Her second best constellation adds decent value to your Ganyu. This is simply a DPS increase for Ganyu herself, and also lowers her dirt low energy recharge requirements to the point where you barely need to run any. Overall, a solid C1, one that is a luxury upgrade to the DPS, if anyone decides they really want 
love that upgrade. Though it does not fix any flaws of her kit, as at C0, Ganya's already complete. Rita plays in those spenders should stop here. Do note that this constellation is essentially useless if you only play Ganyu as a burst support. And also, not to influence anyone, but I own C1 Ganyu, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> If you're running the Shimanawa's Ganyu, casting the skill early before the original buff up time is over will not restore the Shimanawa's passive, meaning that activating it early is useless. There is no reason to obtain this constellation to absolve energy requirements as she already essentially has any to begin with, and C1 already cheapens what little remained of her ER costs before that point. The true value of this constellation shines at C6, but before then, it is essentially useless. A decent DPS increase to Ganyu in Freeze and Mono Cryo teams and her support teams, and is viable within some melt teams where her burst is still viable, though not much. A wonderful constellation that powers up her burst considerably within freeze mono cryo and support Ganyu teams, also within melt teams where her burst is still viable. Her skill is a very small part of her overall DPS, so this will not really be a very important constellation. Still an alright DPS increase, but nothing especially made. For whales, it is worth noting that this constellation is brilliant for speedrunning, as you can melt down chambers incredibly quick with a whale tier setup. For a C6, this this is not bad at all. It provides Ganyu with some genuinely noteworthy burst potential that should not be overlooked. And if you combine her C6 with her C2, you will be able to pull off a charge attack without requiring charge time twice in a row. Pair this with a C6 Shenhe, who quills will not lose effect if your main source of damage is charge attacks, and you will find yourself speedrunning Jane Bros of extreme ease. Perhaps not as strong as some other C6s, though definitely better than a few. Overall, a decent value constellation to consider for whales. Ganyu is simply so intuitive to play at C0, but investing into anything past C2 feels redundant. If anyone chooses to invest in Ganyu's constellations, I personally would recommend not going past C1. C1 should be considered the general stopping point and should only be crossed if you're planning to C6 Ganyu, as the rest of her constellations do not provide much value on their own. This is because they all eventually tie together to her C6. However, this is a benefit to all, as it means that Ganyu is a completed character at C0 with an efficient and useful playstyle that is easy for everyone to understand, while whales gain access to a character that has almost an entirely different feel that also feels unique and powerful to play as opposed to his C0 counterpart. Now, it is time for your viewer questions. Ganyu and Burning Melt teams? Requirements? Mm-hmm. Burning Melt is possible with Ganyu. You require an Ahita for this team to work, and every character can utilize their standard builds for this. The team tends to consist of Ganyu, Bennett, Nihita, and Kazuha, and can also use Ganyu as an off-fielder for her burst. Bennett can be replaced by... Uh... Dia? And Kazuha can be replaced by Sucrose. Simulacra versus Amos? With Bennett? Amos is better without Bennett. Simulacra is better with him. It depends on the team you're playing. Amos provides so much attack, but the attack Bennett provides becomes much less valuable, whereas Simulacra prefers it since it already stacks so highly on crit. Simulacra is better on Ganyu overall, but Amos has great value within cheaper freeze teams. Thank you for your questions, everyone. And now, moving on. Ganyu is a fantastic all-around character that has aged fantastically and still has relevance to this day, even if not as much as before. Her ability to flexibly perform so many roles is formidable in of itself, and hopefully this guide was able to teach you how to milk your Ganyu to the max and get the most creamy damage out of her. Well then, this has been Juice, signing out. And I wish you all a good day. I wish you all superb Blizzard Strayer roles. Or perhaps Wanderer's Troop, if that's your stride. And goodbye.